Good morning. Good morning. Would you guys be willing to pray with me as we begin the service and almost start our new year starting tomorrow? So let, let's go to God together. Father, we come before you and we ask that as we dive into what you have to say to us this morning, that it would penetrate our hearts and that we would see you differently and we would live differently in light of your grace and your mercy. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the most terrifying moments of my life happened when I was about 13 years old. Uh, our youth group back in the day went on a hiking trip in the middle of the Pennsylvania mountains. And it was a 40 mile hiking trip, a three day trip. And uh, there's nothing around. If you've ever been to those Pennsylvania mountains, there's nothing around. Uh, so you start in one place and you don't see anyone or anything except for your group until you get to the very end of that trip three days later. And on the second day, I stepped on a ground hive. And I'm not talking about like a, a little tiny thing or a step near it. I mean, I stepped into a crater about this large, my foot directly in it. And the hive exploded with hundreds, possibly thousands of bees that just started hunting down myself and our entire group. And people will tell you that if you ever get attacked by bees um, or if you're ever being swarmed by anything like that, that what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to stay calm and relax and to sit still, because the more that you get agitated, the more the bees will get agitated. And for those of you who would give me that advice, I would say to you, good luck. <laughs> and I did what most 13 year olds uh, probably would have done, and I did probably what most of you guys would have done, and I panicked. I panicked big time. I jumped out of the ground hive. I ran, I screamed. I started trying to beat myself with my hands. In fact, my mind went completely maniac. I, I was not even in the right mind anymore. I took my water bottle, started dumping it over my head, thinking that would work. It just made them angrier. Uh, I started looking. I remember vividly starting uh, to think if there was a pond anywhere that I could jump into so that way I could get away from the bees, and there wasn't. So what I did, I literally started to rip my clothes off of my body, and I'm running. Running, here I am, picture this image. I'm 13 years old, running through the woods in the middle of the Pennsylvania mountains in my underwear, screaming my head off. And it, it was a, a terrifying experience for me. But, but you know what I believe is true, and I think that we can all agree with, is that fear will often make you do things that you wouldn't normally do under most circumstances, right? When you're afraid of something, you will do things that you never dreamed of doing. I never thought I'd be running through the woods in my underwear screaming my head off, but here I was because I was absolutely terrified and in a ton of pain. Fear will make you do things that you never intended to do. In fact, I think that fear will dictate our entire course of our life if we allow it to. Fear can change and alter the entire narrative of our life and everything that we do and everything we are, if we allow it to. So the question I want to propose to you is, what do you fear most going into 2024? What dictates the course of your life in 2024? We're starting a brand new series this morning in the book of Proverbs. And today is the, the very first day. And our hope, our dream is that our church would start January 2024, the brand new year, that we would start this year off seeking the wisdom of God found in the book of Proverbs. And what's interesting, what we will find very quickly in the book of Proverbs, that 14 times, 14 times in the book of Proverbs, it tells us and the authors invite us to fear the Lord to fear the Lord. In fact, it says it four times in the first chapter, to fear the Lord. And if you're like me, this raises some unsettling questions when you read a passage like this, is why on earth would God ask me to be afraid of him? Does God want me to fear him? What does it mean to fear the Lord? 
So I want to warn you, today we're going to do something a little bit different than probably what things normally look like. Most of the time, uh, we'll spend some time in a specific passage or story and we'll dissect that. But today, uh, my goal is to kind of give us a, an overview or an introduction into the book of Proverbs, if, if you will. So we're going to jump to a couple of different places. And the purpose of this is so that we can be better prepared going into the month of January and to future weeks. And so that, get this, and so that you and I can start to learn and understand what does it mean to live our lives fearing the Lord? What does that mean? Are you ready to do that with me today? I'm excited to do it with you too. Proverbs 1, chapter, I'm sorry, Proverbs 1, verse 7 tells us this. I believe that the entirety of the book of Proverbs hinges off this verse and this statement. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Pastor Bob has given this analogy uh, a couple of different times, and I, th I thought it was super helpful, so I will share it with you. Imagine for a moment that you are in 10th grade, as terrifying as a thought that might have, uh, uh, that might have been. 10th grade was not a good time for Stephen's life <laughs> back in 10th grade. But imagine that you were back in 10th grade, and you were at your friend's house hanging out with a group of friends, and you know that you have a curfew to be home at 10 p.m. sharp, and if you're not, your parents will give you a hard time. You know you have to be home by 10 p.m., but your friends tell you, hey, stay a little bit longer. Stay to at least 10.30 or 11 o'clock. Don't go home yet. We want to keep hanging out. The night is still young. In that moment, you have to make a choice. Who are you going to listen to? Will you listen to your friends or will you listen to your parents? The person that you listen to in that moment, I, I believe, is who you fear most. If you listen to your friends, you are saying that I fear the opinions, the rejection, or the fear of missing out with my friends. That is what I fear most. If I say, no, I'm listening to my mom and dad, it's because I know what my mom and dad will do to me if I don't get home at this time, and I fear them most. Fearing God is not about cowering in terror before him. I believe that what we fear is what we will listen to. And more than that, more than just what we will listen to, who we listen to and who we fear is who we trust. I believe that my parents have a better intention for the longevity of my life than my friends do at 10 p.m. at night. Who we fear is who we listen to and who we trust. Whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to in your life? I know for many of us that we have spent our entire lives re, uh, regurgitating the things that our parents have said to us, have done to us, or maybe not done the things that we wanted them to. And we have lived our entire lives trying to be the exact opposite of what they said to us or what they've done to us. And our whole life has been dictated by the voices of our parents. Many of us hear the lies of the enemy infiltrating our minds and tell us to do things that we know are not helpful for us, that we know are not healthy for us, but we will do them anyway because we believe it brings us some kind of safety and comfort to our lives. And we will allow other voices to be the thing that dictates our life. Who do you fear and who do you listen to? What voices are guiding your life? And what would it look like if we were to fear the Lord and listen to the voice of the Lord? And this is where the book of Proverbs comes in. Are you ready to go on this journey with me here? The book of Proverbs uh, actually has three different sections to it. One, two, and three different sections. You can see it on the screen here kind of laid out individually. And the funny thing about Proverbs is that the first nine chapters of Proverbs are actually not Proverbs. They're not Proverbs at all. In fact, chapters 10 through 29, the second section in the middle, those are what we traditionally think of when we think of Proverbs. Those are those little cute nuggets of wisdoms, the sayings that repeat over and over again. That's what we normally think of when we think of Proverbs. But the first nine chapters are not that at all. In fact, the first nine chapters consist of 10 different speeches from a father to a son. And the father is instructing his son. He's saying, son, listen to my voice. Follow the wisdom of your father 
father and mother so that your world and your life may go well for you, so that you may have blessing and you will know how to live well in the world that you live in today. But he warns his son over and over again of the dangers that come of giving into foolishness and selfishness and the destruction that can come if he gives into selfishness in his life. So the father pleads and invites his son to listen to the wisdom of his father. And then in chapters one through nine, there are four different poems from wisdom herself. Wisdom is personified as a woman, and she is often referred to as Lady Wisdom. And Lady Wisdom, over and over and over again in these first nine chapters, says that she calls out to anybody that will listen. In fact, it says that she stands on the street corner and says, anyone who listens to my voice can receive and can understand the wisdom of God. Four times she has these beautiful poems where she talks about the wisdom of God. And the picture, the image that we are given in the first nine chapters is this. God's wisdom can be gained. God's wisdom can be gained. It is for anyone and everyone. Do you believe that you have the ability to receive, to know, and to understand the wisdom of God? You are not disqualified from that. God's wisdom can be gained. Lady Wisdom gives one poem uh, in, in chapter eight. I think it is one of the most epic poems of all time. And she reveals to us the nature of God and who he is. Um, and then also what it means to live in his wisdom. Proverbs chapter eight, 22 says this. You ready? The Lord brought me forth. This is wisdom talking. As the first of his works before his deeds of old, I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when the heavens were in place. When he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that the waters would not overstep his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in the whole world and the delight in mankind. Isn't that an epic poem? talking about the beginning of time, the creation, and wisdom was there. And this poem, it gives us this image in this picture that God's wisdom is woven into the very fabric of the universe. That God's wisdom is intertwined with his created order. And if you and I are to live well in the world that God has created, then we are to listen to the voice of the Lord and listen to his wisdom so that we can interact with the world he's created. But if we do not, if we do not listen to the wisdom and to the voice of God, it is almost as if we are going up against the very grain of creation itself and we are rebelling against creation itself and there will be destruction and chaos and disorder for us. So Lady Wisdom and God himself pleads and says, listen to my voice. Seek the wisdom of God. I also think there's something very interesting about this passage. Wisdom talks as if she was there from the very beginning with God. And it's very similar. In Genesis 1, chapter, Genesis 1 verse 2, uh, the Holy Spirit says that the Holy Spirit is hovering over the deep as all of creation is being made. There's so many similarities between those, those two stories. And what we see here is that the tool, the tool that God used when he created everything was wisdom. It was wisdom. And the theme that we get all throughout the book of Proverbs, I think it's incredibly crucial for us to understand that part of what it means to fear the Lord, part of what it means to fear the Lord is to build and engage a presence and a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are you seeking the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you seeking the voice of the Holy Spirit? 
Are you engaging with him in deep, intimate prayer? Are you allowing his word to, to confiscate your heart? Are you seeking the voice of the Holy Spirit and allowing his wisdom to invade your life? When you feel like you have a family member who is being destructive and you no longer know how to deal with them, are you engaging in a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Are you seeking his voice? When you feel like your, your job is just beating you to death and it's a dead end and is sucking all of the energy out of you, are you seeking the wisdom, the presence, and the relationship of the Holy Spirit? When it feels like your kids are slowly beginning to drift away from the Lord and they are making decisions that, that, you, that you don't even understand why they are making them and you don't know what to do anymore, you don't know what to say anymore, you don't know how to handle them anymore, are you seeking the presence, the relationship, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit? Are you engaging with him? in prayer. Whose voice is dictating your life? Is it fear and outside voices or is it the fear of the Lord? The final or section of Proverbs concludes in chapters 30 through 31. And it's two speeches from two different kings. The first king, his name is King Agur. And he, he opens up his speech. I think this is hilarious. He opens up his speech in, in chapter 30. He's lamenting. He's grieving about, uh, about himself. He opens up, and the ESV says it this way. Surely I am too stupid to even be a man. Anyone else relate to that? Like, man, yeah, yeah. Finally, the Bible's speaking right to me here. I am too stupid to be a man. And he begins to lament and to cry out to God. And what he finds is he continues the speech that he has in fact found the wisdom of God and that he knows how to rule justly in the wisdom of God. And what he is encouraged by is that even someone like him who feels as if they are too stupid to be a man can find the wisdom of God. The second king, his name is King Lemuel. He again ends Proverbs. The very last thing in Proverbs, once again, is he ends Proverbs with another speech to his son. And he's telling his son that in order to rule wisely and justly, that you need to seek the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God, get this, the wisdom of God would help him to give a voice to the voiceless, to help and defend those who are needy and poor, and to love those who are helpless. This is what he says in chapter 31. And then he gives one of the most famous poems, not only in Proverbs, but perhaps in all of the Bible, in Proverbs 31, and is about a virtuous woman. Many refer to this as the Proverbs 31 woman. Now, some of you have some pretty preconceived ideas about this passage, Proverbs 31. Some of you love this chapter and it has brought you much encouragement and joy to your life of, of who God has called you to be. And, and I love that. Some of you despise this chapter because you feel as if it's very limiting, not only to you, but what it means to be a woman. And some of you have no idea what I'm talking about and have never read this before either. And if that's you, we're all gonna learn something together here if that works for you. I believe that this is one of the most misconceived uh, or misunderstood passages in, in all of the Bible in Proverbs chapter 31. And here's what I want you to know. The, the, the purpose of Proverbs 31, this poem about the virtuous woman, it is not an ideal of what it means to be a good housewife. That is, that is not the purpose of this poem, of this chapter. The purpose of this chapter is to reveal to us, to give us an image. What would it look like what would it look like for somebody to totally fear and trust the weight of their life in the hands of the Lord? What would that look like? So it actually lists these things out for us. These are some of the things that it says here. It says that she makes wise and honest business decisions. She dresses herself with strength. She's generous to the poor, provides warm clothes for her children and those who are vulnerable. She's well-respected. She has high standing among the leaders of the city. She teaches wisdom and kindness and people call her blessed, including her family. How many of you would like to live a life like that? That sounds really good to me. This woman who has so feared the Lord, 
that every circle, every sphere that she has walked into, she has carried the wisdom of God with her and she makes an impact, an eternal impact into every sphere and circle that she walks into. That sounds like something that I want for my life. This is what it means to fear the Lord. And get this, the wisdom of God, the wisdom is God is not meant for me to simply benefit myself, to build my own intellect of, or understanding on something. The wisdom of God, as we have seen in these last two chapters, is meant for us to bless others. Hear me, hear me now. If you and I, find ourselves in a position where we are building understanding, intellect, knowledge about God and who he is, but we are simultaneously moving further and further away from people who are in need, who are hurting, who are different than us, then I think we need to reevaluate whether this wisdom is coming from the fear of the Lord or if it's from other voices in our life. Fearing the Lord moves us towards people. And we are to be a people who bless the nations through the wisdom of God. Could you imagine for a moment, picture the church of God, the big C church of God, full of people relying on the wisdom and the voice, and trusting their lives, their weight of their lives, in the hands of the Lord. Could you imagine for a moment the difference, the impact the church of God could have in our world with people who fear the Lord? How many of you guys believe that going into 2024, our world needs more people who rely on the voice of the Holy Spirit, who fear God? The wisdom of God is meant to make an impact into every sphere that we encounter. Whose voice are you listening to? So one thing that you will find so as you begin this journey, if that's you, that you say, I want to begin this journey of seeking the wisdom of God, of fearing the Lord, to listening to his voice and trusting my life in his hands. If, if that is you and you decide that that's a journey that you want to embark on, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is this. The good news is that God's wisdom can be gained. God's wisdom can be gained. It doesn't matter if you say, I, I am too stupid to even be a man, or if you're the smartest person in the room. God's wisdom can be gained. That is the good news. In a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it can be gained. The bad news is this. You will fail. Can I, I'm just going to try something with me. On the count of three, I'm just going to have you all say, I will fail. One, two, three. I will fail. Ah, oh, that felt good. That felt really good. I will fail. If you've been following Jesus for any amount of time at all, you will find that you will not always get this right. In fact, you will fail over and over and over again. You will do things that were not wise. You will make mistakes. You will hurt people. And, and, and you wish that you could be better. You will fail. But I have more good news, more good news for you. Just last week, I don't know if you remember, just last week, we celebrated the birth of God in human flesh. His name is Jesus. And God comes down to earth and lives a perfect life. He lives a life in perfect harmony with the wisdom of God. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1.24 tells us that Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. And he lived a life that we never could. So that when you and I fail, Jesus is there to make up the difference. And if we trust and rely on the person of Jesus, there is grace, there is forgiveness, there is the power of the Holy Spirit, and we can experience grace where we couldn't do it before. And I believe the first step in fearing the Lord is trusting your entire being in the weight of the hands of of Jesus. Whose voice are you listening to? In 2024, 
Would you want to be a people who relies on the wisdom of God, engaged in a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Whose voice are you listening to? I'm going to invite the worship team to come back onto the stage. So we're going to invite you to something pretty cool. At least I think it's cool. And if you don't think it's cool, just don't tell me so I don't feel bad. (laughs) We're going to invite you to something pretty cool. This January, our church has decided uh, that we are going to go through a devotional through the book of Proverbs through the month of January. We, as a church, together, as a community, want to dive into the wisdom of God in Proverbs to start our new years off seeking the voice and the person of God. So we want to invite you into this devotional. And you're going to hear a little bit more of how to access this later, but essentially it's a devotional a day. We're going to read one Proverbs a day. They're not very long, so it's not a huge commitment. But one Proverbs a day, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs and 31 days in January. It matches up well. Uh, So we want to invite you to this. And the devotional that we're going to be going through is written by uh, uh, an organization called The Bible Project. If you ever heard of The Bible Project, but they're phenomenal. But... The goal of this is not simply so that we can check something off so that I can build something among ourselves. We want to be a people who diligently, through the actions of our life, through our very being, through our identity, are people who seek after the voice of the Lord, who fear God so that we can be a blessing to the nations. We're not going to get it right. We're going to get it wrong. But Jesus makes the difference. We can trust in his grace and his forgiveness. You're going to hear more about that later, but I want to prep you because I think this could be a really big deal for us. Let's go to God in prayer as we continue to worship. Father, we enter this new year, whether it's, it's with confidence or strength or, or unsteadiness or wavering, whatever area or, or, or mode that we walk into January with, God, we pray and we ask for your faithfulness, for your guidance, for your strength. And I pray that we become a people who rely on the voice of the Lord. God, we pray for your wisdom. When the answer doesn't seem to be so black and white, when wrong and evil were good and bad, where all of those things seem to mix together, Lord, we pray for your wisdom on the choices to make, the people to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand on your feet as we continue to worship?